Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to change the minimum and maximum CPU clock speed or frequency in Linux. So one of the things that I often do in Windows is change the default power plan from balance to performance when I'm using my desktop. The main reason for doing this is that it forces Windows to constantly run the CPU at the maximum clock speed, which as a result offers better performance. Of course, the downside to doing this is that your machine is now going to be using more energy, and if you've got poor system cooling or lack of airflow, then of course the machine may overheat and then turn itself off. Now this is obviously more important if you've got a laptop since they will typically run on battery and cooling can be more of an issue. However, for desktops, I don't tend to find it's that much of an issue. Now, although Linux itself does not actually have power plans like Windows, at least not in the traditional sense, it is still possible to specify your minimum or maximum CPU clock speed using a utility called CPU Power. Now, CPU Power itself is a collection of user space utilities and they're designed to work and assist with CPU frequency scaling. In other words, it allows you to specify what CPU governor you wish to use and also what clock speed your CPU should be running at. Now, a CPU governor can be understood as a profile for the CPU and it basically determines when to increase or decrease your CPU clock speed based on the current system load. So, for example, if you're using the PowerSafe CPU governor, what that will typically do is run your CPU at the lowest possible clock speed. Whereas the performance CPU governor is going to run it in the opposite way, so it'll run it at the highest non overclocked clock speed. Now, to put it in perspective, I have a AMD Ryzen 5 3600, so I can actually underclock my CPU to run at the lowest clock speed of 2.2 GHz if I use the PowerSafe governor, or alternatively, I can run it at the highest supported clock speed of 3.6 if I use the performance governor. Although I will point out that my CPU does also have the option to be overclocked to 4.2 GHz. However, in most cases, assuming that you're using a Linux distribution that uses the Linux kernel 5.10 or newer, it's very likely you're using the SCED Util CPU governor, and that aims to have a happy medium between power saving and consumption. So the first step in the process is to install CPU power. Now CPU power should be available to be installed from the repositories of Linux distributions that use systemd. And that includes Fedora, Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, Debian, Manjaro, Ubuntu, and then anything based on these particular popular Linux distributions. For example, I use Endeavor OS, which is Archbitch. So what I would use is the following terminal command, which is sudo pacman s and then the word CPU power. Obviously, just adjust the syntax to match your distribution that you're using. So the second step is to actually use CPU power itself. Once it's installed, you launch CPU power by running it on the terminal. For example, running CPU power frequency info is going to return information about the hardware limits of your CPU, what CPU governors are available, as well as what the current policy is set to. In my particular case, as you can see, the CPU governor is set to performance, and the minimum and maximum clock speed specified are 3.6 GHz. Now, technically, you can make all of these changes using the terminal. However, I found it's far easier to edit the CPU config file. And to find that file, you'll want to open up your root location and go to etc. There'll be a subfolder called default. And then in there, as you can see, there is a CPU config file. Now, if you're using a different distribution, it may be in a slightly different location, but the concept's still the same. So to open this config file, you want to use a text editor. I'm going to use Kit for that purpose. And within the file itself, there are two areas you want to take note of. And the first is the section here where it says define CPU governor. And as you can see, here's a list of all the available ones you can specify. In my case, I've got on demand, performance, power save, conservative, and user space. As you can see in my case, I've chosen to go for performance. And I've obviously had to enable that. So by default, that will have a hash. If you remove the hash, that will enable that parameter. The second one we want to look at is where it says limit frequency range. And as you can see, there's a field here for minimum and maximum. As you probably guess, that refers to the maximum and minimum frequency that your CPU should be running at. As you can see, I've set it to 3.6 gigahertz. There are some other options down here where you've got obviously a frequency to be set if it's not available. You can also specify what cores are to be used. And then some other things underneath here, where it talks about other things to do with your CPU threading. Again, not really relevant for this case. The only two we want to concentrate on is the ones at the top. So the final thing we need to do is now apply the config at boot. And we can do that with two terminal commands since CPU power has an accompanying service. 
And the first command is sudo systemctl enable cpu.service. Now in my particular case, I've already, already done this. Otherwise you get a message about it being creating a sim link to the service itself. And finally, to apply these settings immediately, you can run the following command, which is sudo systemctl start cpu.service. Alternatively, you can just reboot your system and that'll be applied at boot. Either way, with that, you're all done. So in conclusion, Linux, like many operating systems, does allow you to control how fast you want your CPU to run at. And although Linux may not have a dedicated GUI like Windows, it's good to know that the equivalent functionality is still available. As always guys, thank you very much for watching, and if you did find this video helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, as well as subscribe to this channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you again next time. Bye now.